This morning we're going to tackle a couple of more topics in our series titled What's the Point? And for those of you that aren't familiar with this particular series, um, what it is is we are looking at what the main focus or the main topic or main theme of each one of the books of the Bible is all about. And we started in the New Testament and we've been going through and those episodes are available on our podcast platforms uh, as well as on the toughquestionsforgod.org website on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can dial in and pick up any one of those. But today we're going to take a look at the book of 2 Corinthians and we're going to just start to touch the book of Galatians. So let's just jump right in. The book of 2 Corinthians was Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. Now, they had matured since the first time that Paul had written to them. And Paul wrote to them, if you remember from last week, he wrote to them because they were arguing and they were dis dysfunctional and they were not behaving the way the Christian church should behave, especially as unified in their faith and their love and support for each other. So Paul wrote to them after a little while. They, they had matured, and this is his second letter. But the problem now was kind of expanding into different areas. There were some people that were saying that they too were apostles and that they were starting to teach and to preach heresies into the Christian foundation which had been established, into their theological foundation that Jesus left with them, that the church was being built upon. There's people already back in those days that were trying to, you know, undermine what Jesus had taught. And Paul writes to kind of clear that or clear those things up. He also wrote to that church in, in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, to verify or to affirm for them his own calling to be an apostle of Christ. And he talks to them and he says, you know, you you know that I never took anything from you. I've supported myself through the whole thing. You know, so I'm not one of these people that claims to be a, an apostle. And, and then I hold my hand out wanting you to, you know, fill my pockets or provide, you know, living for me. He says, I did all that on my own so that I wouldn't have that conflict. He said, you guys realize that I have given up my whole past life. I've given up my whole history of the things that I've done, the, the, the stance that I have in the community and how I've built upon that for, for decades. He said, I gave all that up when I encountered Jesus on that road to Damascus. And now I've been called by Christ to come into the world and to preach the good news, to preach the gospel. He says, you got to realize I gave everything up. He says, not only did I not charge you, he says, but also look at all of the times that I've gone through various persecutions. You know, the shipwrecks and the, the attempted stonings and when they drove him out of particular cities and towns. And he goes on to explain to them the cost of becoming a disciple of Jesus for himself. And he adds that to part of his, you know, explanation of why he considers himself an apostle. Because of those things, uh, as well as the calling of Jesus in his own life. You know, Paul also covered a lot of different issues that the church was dealing with. He, you know, talked about love of Jesus and what it meant to love Jesus. He, he talked about the issue of reconciliation and, and repentance and giving and sacrificial giving. And, and he talked about the false teachers that were among them, you know, that were dressed, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, you know. And, and Paul brings all of that to fruition. The main point of the book of 2 Corinthians, though, is Paul talks about what it means to suffer for Christ and how to suffer for Christ. And also that suffering, it, faith in Jesus doesn't save us from suffering. Suffering for Jesus and the opposition to our faith in Jesus, you know, there will always be those that are going to try and persecute us, tell us that we're wrong. They're going to deny the faith. They're going to try and manipulate it until it becomes something that they're comfortable with. You know, there's all of this opposition to the truth that Jesus left us with. And Paul is telling the church then, as well as us, 
guys, get used to it. It's going to be a difficult road that you have to go down. Well, then Paul talks about, um, well, let me, let me bring up one of the scriptures that Paul brings, talks about. And he says this to the Galatian church. He says, as we have said before, so now I say it again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, in other words, the one that you received when Jesus, you know, ascended into heaven and left the disciples, you know, to go out into the world and open churches and preach the good news. He says, if you are listening to preaching of any other nature, let that person be accursed. Let that person be damned before God. You see, there was a group of people known as Judaizers, and these were people that were actually teaching that in order to receive Christ properly, you had to first become a Jew, and then you could become a Christian. Now, for example, they were teaching that, that you know, Christians, you have to be circumcised, and you have to be, uh, you have to follow these particular guidelines and rituals that the Jews were following. And then after you were assimilated into, you know, becoming a Jew by following those things, then you could receive the forgiveness that Jesus has offered. And really that was heresy. It was not the foundation of what Jesus left us with. It's not the foundation of the Christian faith. Well, I understand some of the struggle that they were having back then because you got to remember the nation of Israel was was one that had been you know following God throughout uh, their time in Egypt uh, out in the desert uh, all through their their good times and their bad times they had been following God but they were living under all of these different rules and guidelines and regulations that needed to be kept in order to be in a right stand before God. Well, unfortunately, nobody could keep those rules and regulations. Nobody was good enough to keep them all so that you could be self-justified before God. So Jesus comes and he says, I'll do it for you because you can't do it on your own. And they had a hard time with that. I mean, for centuries they were you know, following the rules and the regulations and the rituals and all of those things, they're following them. And then there's, then you add to that people that are coming in teaching all these heresies, you know, that other things needed to be done too. And it was changing the entire concept of what Jesus did for us on the cross and the plan of God and this new faith, you know, where people became followers of the way or Christians. You know, it changed the dynamics greatly. So Paul is telling the Galatians, you know, guys, you have these false teachers there among you, and you need to make sure that you don't, don't listen to them. You, I'm ruling those people out. You need to rule them out of your church because they're not teaching you, you know, what, what Christ did and what Christ left us with. So if we have people like that that are trying to undermine the faith, hey, let them be a curse. Let them answer to God. Like I said, nobody was good enough or obedient enough in order to be justified before a, a, a righteous and a holy and a perfect God. Nobody could be good enough on their own. Eventually, they would end up being convicted of their own sin, which is why Jesus did it all for us. He came and he lived the perfect life. He came and he obeyed the rules. He came and he died for sin. He, he was the substitutionary sacrifice on our behalf. You see, remember the, in the Old Testament, this concept of a scapegoat. You see, what God would allow the Israelites to do would be to pick an animal and to, to spiritually transfer their sin upon the head of this animal and then slaughter the animal, let the animal die because of those sins. And it was a temporary covering of the sinfulness of the people of Israel. Well, Jesus comes, and again, he's throwing what they're used to aside for the sake of what God is doing in the world. You know, no longer could the 
the sin of the Israelites be paid for or at least covered over, you know, by the sacrifice of a substitutionary animal. Now it was God himself who was coming to the front, you know, and he was the one that was that was going to be the substitutionary sacrifice to God the Father. That was Jesus. And he says to them, he says, you can't do it on your own. That's why the, the ritual of, you know, the scapegoat had to be practiced time and time and time again. You know, it was an annual event. And it was because it was only a temporary recovering. But Jesus said, I'm going to do it all for you once and for all. He says, I fulfill the law by living a perfect life here, keeping all the rules. And then I'm allowing myself to have your sin transferred to me. For me to pay, it's now become my debt. And he says, I, the wages of sin are death, so I will die for you. And then all you have to do is have a, not believe in me. I mean, it, it's easy to believe that Jesus was here and who Jesus was. But he said, you have to have faith in me, faith in my sacrifice on your behalf. So not only did I obey all the rules and fulfill the Old Testament, but he said, under this new relationship that you have with God, this New Testament you know, relationship that you have with God, it'll be based on your faith in who I am and what I've done on your behalf. He says, that's it. Now, that might sound easy, but having complete faith in the sacrifice of Jesus on your behalf, without you doing anything, you know, to, to add to it, that's a tough place to go. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that we're exempt from following, you know, God's laws or rules. I mean, he gave them to us, you know, as, as a way to live a holy life before God and with God. You know, so we still follow them to the best of our ability. But being human beings, we're going to mess up sooner or later. And that means we fall short. So when we do fall short, we can rely on the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf to have paid the price of that sin. And that's the bottom line, is that we have a relationship with God based on, excuse me, we have a relationship with God based on faith, not just actions or activities, based on faith in what Jesus did and trust that he's not lying to us about it. Rather than having a relationship with God based on our activities and the things that we can do. You see where I'm going? Paul writes to the Galatian church and he says, guys, there's a, there's a huge transition that you need to make here. Going away from the ritual aspect, going away from the activity aspect of the faith that you're used to in God. Instead, now believing that Jesus has actually covered your sin permanently he sacrificed himself after living a perfect life where he where he, he he wasn't guilty of anything but he took your guilt upon himself and that's the new relationship that you have to get used to that's why paul wrote the book of galatians is to encourage these people to look past their own understanding, into this new understanding that Jesus left us with, and also take people that were preaching any other gospel and put them aside. And he says, let them be accursed. Let them answer to God and pay the consequences themselves. So that's kind of the deal with the book of Galatians. I want you to kind of wrestle with that a little bit this week and think about it. And, and join me next week as we get into another aspect of what's the point. Thanks. And God bless. Tough Questions for God is a teaching ministry of the Rosebush United Methodist Church, where we challenge our faith with some of the most difficult issues. Tough Questions for God is available on Facebook Live Sundays at 11.30 a.m. or go on our website at toughquestionsforgod.org. And just follow the links on the homepage for YouTube or via podcast. Thanks for joining, and don't forget to like and share. God bless.